What's going on everybody? Welcome to a new episode of Guns N' Roses True Story. Now if you guys haven't seen this series before on my channel, in each episode I take an in-depth look at a Guns N' Roses song. I've also done an in-depth look at some of their past albums including the Spaghetti Incident and Live Era as well. So I dive into the history of the song, the, who the writers are, uh, some cool live performances, some demos that maybe you haven't heard, and some other cool interesting facts that maybe you're not familiar with. I also love to hear from you guys and hear your thoughts on the song, and maybe you have some interesting facts that I haven't included in my video, so let me know down below. But let's get started with the song for this episode, which is Yesterday's. Now, Yesterday shares some similarities with the song The Garden in the sense that uh, there's four writers for the song, but only one of which is an official Guns N' Roses member. So the song was written by Axl Rose, West Arkeen, Del James, and Billy McLeod. Now, Wes Arkeen has worked with Guns N' Roses before. He had written a couple other songs, including It's So Easy, uh, The Garden, and a handful of other songs. And Del James had also written, helped uh, co-write the song The Garden as well. Now, if you look at the actual track listing for the song, uh, Dizzy Reed does play on Yesterday's, but he actually plays the organ. The actual piano on the track is played by Axel himself. Now, this song was also featured on the Guns N' Roses Greatest Hits album that was put out in 2004, and the, a live version of the song was also included on the Live Era album as well. Uh, the song ended up getting released as a single back in 1992. Uh, it was released in November 13, 1992 in the U.S. and October 26, 1992 in the U.K. Uh, the song ended up peaking at number 72 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts. Uh, the live version of Yesterday's, which was included in, on the Live Era album, is actually from a concert Guns N' Roses did in Las Vegas from ja on January 5th, 1992. Uh, the exact same performance was actually shown at the 1992 American Music Awards two days after the Guns N' Roses concert. The American Music Awards for 1992 was broadcast on January 27th of 1992. And once Yesterday's was actually released as a single uh, in the U.S., uh, it actually included a, the live performance from Vegas as well on the same single disc. Also, the U.K. 12-inch uh, vinyl version also included the live performance of Yesterday's, and the U.K. and Korea CD actually all included a live version of Knocking on Heaven's Door that Guns N' Roses did at the marquee. Now, going back to the 1992 American Music Awards uh, performance, uh, Slash actually recorded a little tribute to James Brown, which I've linked to down below. He basically just talks about how James Brown influenced him as a guitarist. And the actual performance they did in Vegas on January 25th, 1992, is the exact same show where Slash met his second wife, Perla, backstage. Now at this time, or around this time, Slash's wife was working as a, in the escort business as a madam. As uh, stated in this article, uh, she was actually fined $4,000 for her role in organizing a high-end party at the MGM Grand. Now, Guns N' Roses were also nominated for a couple of awards at the 1992 American Music Awards. They were nominated, nominated for Favorite Pop, Rock Band, Duo, or Group. They ended up losing to CC Music Factory. And then they were also nominated for uh, Album of the Year when it came to uh, Favorite Heavy Metal and Hard Rock Album. They actually lost uh, to Van Halen, who won for, for Unlawful Carnal Knowledge. Metallica's Black Album was also nominated. But Guns N' Roses did take one award home. They ended up winning a favorite uh, heavy metal hard rock artist. Also nominated was Metallica and Van Halen. And then also, uh, there was, of course, a music video put out for Yesterday's by Guns N' Roses. There was actually two versions of the music video. Uh, both are actually shot in black and white and directed by Andy Morahan, who did the Don't Cry. He did Estranged and November Rain as well. And the first version of the video actually features the band playing in an empty warehouse. The second version mixes clips of the band playing in this warehouse, and it also includes photographs of the band members uh, during the Use Your Illusion tour, as well as former members Izzy Stradlin and Steven Adler, who had both left the group by then. This video was also included on the Welcome to the Videos DVD compilation that Guns N' Roses put out, which basically included all the music videos they had ever done in their career at that point. Now, one thing I've noticed is that if you guys watch yesterday's, the same t-shirt and look that Axel has in the video is the exact same t-shirt and look he has in the making fucking videos for Guns N' Roses November Rain which makes me believe the actual interviews for the making uh, the November Rain video was done the time they filmed yesterday's Axel's, hair's look the, Axel's hair looked the same 
and he's wearing the same RFK stadium, and he's got the same facial hair as well. At the same time when Yesterday's was released, there was actually a rumor going around that Slash was never even in the music video. Some people claimed it was a stand-in for Slash, but MTV News confirmed that it actually was Slash. Some people may have thought that because he wasn't wearing his signature top hat. Now, contrary to popular belief, Yesterday's was actually played live once before uh, the User Illusion Tour. It first premiered in 1988 at a show that Guns N' Roses played uh, at the Coconut Teaser in Hollywood, California. And the set list was mostly consisted of covers, uh, but they did throw in a original song in Yesterday's. And uh, actually, uh, the, the band was introduced as the Drunk Fucks. Uh, when they played the show, and GNR actually played with West Arkeen and Del James at this gig. So I've linked to the actual recording down below from YouTube. You guys can go check it out. There's also a little acoustic uh, performance that Axel did with West Arkeen from, I think, an interview they did in MTV News. It was back from like 1988, 1989. I've linked to that interview as well for you guys to check out. Now you guys will notice that the 1988 performance, the arrangement is a bit different. It's also played at a much slower tempo as well. But uh, you can see how they flushed it out on the Use Your Illusions albums when you listen to the 1988 performance versus the actual uh, 1991 version that was released on Use Your Illusion 2. And finally, I want to leave you guys with an acoustic demo of the song from 1986. This song dates back to even before Appetite for Destruction. You guys can go check it out. So that does it for my look back at the Guns N' Roses song yesterday. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know your thoughts on the song and what did you learn that you didn't know before. And did I miss anything? Let me know in the comment section. And as always, guys, make sure you subscribe for the latest Guns N' Roses news. Take care.